Alright, greetings and welcome to your little introduction video about some chromatography here. As you can see, um, chromatography is a group of separation techniques and we separate mixtures. We think of that quite often. When you've got a mixture of compounds, elements, etc., we oft times want to separate that. And this chromatography is dependent upon how fast a substance moves, either as a gas or a liquid, past a stationary phase that it may or may not be attracted to. And so, for example, what we're going to do in the lab is we're going to take a look at some dyes or inks and try to see what pieces parts make up that mixture. And for this, we can use paper chromatography. And the different components that are in the dye or ink are attracted to the paper fibers with different strengths. And these attractions, as we'll spend a lot of time throughout this year talking about, are what we refer to as intermolecular forces. So the less strongly attracted dyes due to the IMFs, that's how I abbreviate intermolecular forces, uh, will move rapidly up the paper and vice versa. So if something is m more attracted to the paper, less to the water, as that's the medium we'll be using, then there will be less travel of that substance. And hopefully we'll see a nice pattern and you want to kind of remember your color wheel if you will because we're going to be investigating different dyes but you don't want to choose ones that aren't really a mixture aka do you remember your primary colors so as you're going to be looking at this investigation because you're going to decide what you want to investigate you want to kind of keep that in mind because ultimately you want to have a separation that's a little hard to see here but here we have blue a blue dot and a yellow dot yellow and blue make green so this dyer ink was probably something green and what you're going to look at is what we call a retention factor. This is measuring how far a substance travels versus how far the solvent travels when we're looking at paper chromatography. So substance over solvent. So here we see again something green separated into blue and yellow and we can calculate the RFs for each of them by comparing how far the substance traveled versus how far the solvent did. So the solvent starts down here and you'll have that marked. The solvent finishes up there and you should have that marked as well on your chromatography paper. And so you can see yellow traveled 5.8 centimeters, the solvent traveled 8.5 centimeters, so the calculation for the RF of the yellow is 0.72. No units, it's just a, a ratio. The cyan, aka blue, traveled a little less. It only traveled 3.1 and so it has a different RF. So you can see by comparing these RFs you would be able to determine the components of a mixture if you wasn't perhaps colored. Now this kind of by looking at the RFs you can see that if we had an RF equal to zero that means that the solute is immobile. It would stay put, it would not travel up the paper. Um, for example, if we had a permanent marker that we used, then it wouldn't travel, it wouldn't separate. So we will be using dyes and inks that are water soluble so that they will indeed travel. And if we had a retention factor equal to one, that means the solute would not be attracted to the paper whatsoever, it would just completely travel with the solvent and never stick. So we shouldn't see either of those situations in the lab, but that's just a little background. Now, where did this all come from? It came from our friend Mikhail Zvet. He was a Russian botanist, and this was back in like 1906. And what he did is he ground up a plant leaf and dissolved it in ethanol. And then he took this green plant leaf stuff in ethanol and flushed it down a column that was filled with calcium carbonate powdered chalk basically and what he noticed was a series of col a series of colored bands 
And what that meant was that this green leaf pigment was made up of a bunch of different pigments. Okay, and so we he found that there were different chlorophylls, xanthophylls, and car carotenoids, I believe that's how you say it. And so he knew that this green overall plant pigment was, in fact, due to a mixture of different pigments. And that's where we actually get the name chromatography come or, or from, because that name chromato means color. And like I said, he was the first one to use this technique, and it all had to be, it was all based on the fact that these different colored bands showed up from the one green plant pigment. Nowadays, more recently, we tend to rely a lot on gas chromatography, GCs. And this is when you have a vaporized substance plus a carrier, typically helium, that's probably our most common because it's very inert, and it just carries the substances along and they pass through a column made of a solid that the substances are attracted to differently just like the paper but now we've got a gas passing through a solid and then the computer printout will show you peaks of different substances and the, the amount that they are present in the mixture the secret to this the beauty of it is um, comparing what we call retention times so not just a retention factor like we did in the paper chromatography but how long it takes for these substances to pass through the solid. And so you'll notice that you know, each substance has a different retention time, and then the height of the peaks will typically tell you the amount present in the mixture. So here we see there's more toluene than there is methanol. And so this technique is very, very common, especially in many forensic investigations, and just it, it, it's a very useful tool in a chemistry laboratory. And just as a little side note, like you see here, gas chromatography for chocolate actually showed that there's over 800 different flavored compounds. So I can't think of anything more useful than talking about chocolate with gas chromatography. Just kidding. Now, make sure that you, on Moodle, have noticed that the chromatography investigation that we're going to be doing on the very first day of school is there. And so when you click on it, you can see exactly what you're going to be expected to be doing. Coming up with your own experiment, it'll tell you exactly what we have in there. Um, it'll tell you what materials are available, some hints, suggestions and what types of things that you're going to be looking for, calculating, etc. So I will have paper copies of this for you when you get here, but at least you can see exactly what we'll be doing. All right, looking forward to seeing you on the first day of school.